is it's a bit complicated if you don't use a PC. I use a Mac. Anything you have to upload a hex file for, it applies to that. So you can program all sorts of Atmega devices or whatever, AVR devices, with a pre-compiled hex file. This will work for all those things. The main thing I'm doing this for is because I use a Mac. Like I picked up a couple of these. These are USB ASPs. Now there's different versions of these, there's different variants. Your ones you've got to connect it on the end. And like that. These are really cheap. They're literally a few dollars. These are really cheap. If you do get one of these, make sure you get one with a programming adapter. Convert it to a 6-pin. Also, if you get this, make sure you get at least two of them. There's a really good reason for that. There'll be links down below to these as well. So I'll put a link down to these so you can buy them through my purchase link. So you make sure you get the right ones, hopefully. This is what it needs to look like, is this. Now, it may or may not have that header installed in here. If it doesn't have it, that's fine. You can install it yourself. They jump in there to 5 volts or 3.3 volts. And that one there is for programming it. So if you need to reprogram the firmware, which is what I'm going to get to next, you need that jumper there. So you need to have that available. The reason you need to get two of these is because a lot of the ones you find online, I think just about all of them, they all come with outdated firmware because they're a clone of someone else's design. Someone designed this thing. They actually got a website, which will be linked down below as well. They have all the files for this. And this last update was in 2011. That is actually the correct one. That's the one you want on it. These things have an even older version of firmware on them, so yeah, you need to reprogram the firmware. In order to do that, you need two of them because you need one of these to program the other one. So if you get one of these, buy two. You have to program this thing first. So what if you don't update the firmware, it will give you some errors, and it may actually even brick the device or give programming errors and cause problems because it's a timing thing. It may get away with it, it may not, depends on what you're programming with it. Anyway, I'm going to show you on a computer the process for doing this. Programming this is exactly the same as programming this. Exactly the same process, but you've got to do this first. And it is a little bit involved. It does seem a bit scary, but if you follow the process, it's actually okay. I mean, I'm not an expert on this stuff, right? I've only just got these things myself, and I managed to figure this out. It wasn't that hard, and because there was no resources really for what I do, I thought I'd do a video about it and share my experience. It's relatively straightforward, but you have to make sure you're doing the right thing here. It is straightforward. Basically, you just get the programmers and plug them in together. Plug them together, like so. As I said, you need the programming jumper. This allows you to rewrite firmware. If you don't have header pins, install them. If you do have header pins, install the jumper. That is now already reprogrammed. When you connect this to a computer, you don't plug this one in, you plug in this one. This one is still a programmer. This is programming this one. The jumper means this is the one that's being programmed. So this is the one you plug into your computer. Don't get that wrong. So you plug that into your computer, and then I'll show you the following steps and go through the process with you and show you how to program it. So the first thing is, go get the programmers. Use the link down below if you don't really have one of these things, or two of these things you need. This is the programmer, which I'm using right now, okay? So you've got two options. You've got one without the adapter and one with the adapter. Get the one with the adapter, like I said, because you will need that and get two pairs. If this one's not available, when you follow a link and it's dead or something like that, just look for USB ASP, and you will find them, and there's loads of them on there. Just pick one. But make sure it's the right angle one like this, with a programming header. This one doesn't have it populated, but you've got the availability to have a programming header put on it, otherwise you can't update the firmware, okay? Now you also need the new firmware, which is on this page here. Hopefully you can read that up there. As you can see here, 2011 is the latest firmware and that's the one you want to get. Download that file there. Now obviously to do this you need the Arduino IDE installed in order to do any of this stuff as well, so that's part of it, but also mentions various softwares you can use for this process in order to burn them. I wonder if this guy actually got any credit for what he worked on. You would hope so. So now we want to look at the Arduino IDE. I've got it booted up and I've already done this before in here. I'm not going to repeat the process, but I'm going to just describe what we've got to deal with here. You have to figure out the path to the hex file which the Arduino IDE and actually more specifically AVR Dude is using. We have to manually manipulate that in order to upload a hex file to a device which is what we're going to do for these programmers or any other device which you need to do a hex file upload for. Exactly the same. Describe the programmer one. First thing I'll do up to tools. Now I've got the programmer plugged in already so in my case I've got this set to Arduino Mega what we're going to be doing for these programmers is not actually programming a Mega, we're programming a Mega 8 in this case. Now you need to be careful, when you get these programmers, check the chip on them, because they could have a different chip on. These have got 8 Mega 8s, they could be an 88 or something different. Make sure that it's an 8 Mega 8 which is on there, and then you have to make sure you specify that when you do the programming. We'll get to that, but for now I've got this set as an 8 Mega, that processor, 2560 is what's on the Retro Chips of the Pro, and then you have to set programmer, 
as USB ASP because that's what this program is. So once you've done all that, you're basically ready to go. Verbose output, you need to do verbose output. So you go to the preferences, and over here you need to verbose output during compilation and upload. Tick both of those, make sure they're both on. I don't know if you need to restart the Arduino ID or not when you do that, I can't remember. But I've had those on for ages, so I'll just have them on. So once you've got the verbose output turned on and you've got your program plugged in, you've chosen the correct programmer device, like the, in this case, USB ASP, which is what we're using. You go to Sketch, you can click on Upload Using Programmer. So it's not like the normal Upload, you click on that one or Upload. Do Upload, Upload Using Programmer. That's the difference. You have to use this one. Now when it does that, it will go through this process here. It will generate the file, will compile it, and that sort of stuff. You can see my, my sketch here is empty. Okay, That's what I use, is an empty sketch. Because you don't care about the contents of the sketch. And when you're actually doing this, don't have your programmer plugged into something. All right? Just just because otherwise it will try and program the device you're plugged into. Just have the program itself, nothing plugged into the other end of it. Do this upload via programmer. Because all you're trying to do is find one line of text. So in this case, you've got this white output here, goes through the whole process, and right before the orange one, which is where AVR dude has started, the very last line here, this is the line we want. So you select that line. Copy it, paste it into a text file. That's it. All this process is just to get that one line of text. Because we need to know the entire AVR dude configuration setup and all the paths and everything it uses, the programmer settings and stuff like that. Okay, that's what it's doing. So let's copy that. I'm going to open up a new window hopefully. So we'll copy that path into there. And that's really small text, so you can't see it too well on screen, but right now it doesn't matter too much. We've got the file there, we've got the text. Save it, all right? So you've got that recorded somewhere. In terminal, you use a terminal program to program the devices using this line, which is then edited. So I've made the text a bit bigger, so hopefully you can see it on screen now. If not, I will probably include a text file below to give you examples of what it will look like, so you know what the output should be and how it's structured. But I'm going to describe it anyway. So the first part here is referring to AVR Dude. The second part here is configuration file for AVR Dude. Those bits here, don't touch them. Don't edit them. Those are the bits we really needed at that output. Next bit here is minus V. That's verbose output. So we can see more error messages and what's going on. This bit here is important. Hyphen P. This is the processor we're trying to program. Now there is a list which I'm going to pop a link to. Which tells you what devices, the shortcuts and things like that. So this could be, as the Arduino IDE has put it, it's got no space in there. But it could actually be a space, which is actually the correct way. <laughs> in this case it's specifically saying the Atmega2560 it could also say M2560 but there is a list if you look for AVR dude list device list or processor list or something like that it lists all the processors now I've actually I will be putting a link down below for that as well so you can go to that page and if you're using a different device you know what device name to put in here C is the programmer we're actually using again there should be a space in here USB ASP is what we're using in this case then you've got Big P, which is the port. In this case, we're using USB port. And then this bit we're really interested in. Once you've got these configured for what you're doing, you can repeat that. Well, the first thing we're doing is programming the programmer. We need to change this device here. So this is a uh, M8. It's an Atmega 8. M8 is a code for that. Or it could be Atmega 8. You could also use that. Oops. At Mega 8 with an A on hand. Right, I was going to recognize it. Either one will work. Okay, you can use at Mega 8 or M8. Look in the list to make sure that your processor is, is correct. Now, I purchased both of these programmers from the same person at the same time. The processors are very slightly different versions of the same processor. So, again, make sure that what's on that board between both of them is correct. This is the device you're trying to program, not the programmer you're using. So, make sure that, that matches the one you're trying to program. M8, I'm just going to call it that because that's simple. This U flash W part, that stays the same. You do not change that. W colon. After that colon, that's where we edit. Right up to the end of the other colon here, so it's colon I, that stays there as well. So this bit here is your path and file name. Right there. So W colon up to the hex. That's the bit we want to replace when we're doing something. How do you know what to replace it with? Ah, glad you asked. So now I've opened up the folder which we downloaded from the original designer's website, which has got this firmware, the 2011 firmware. 
obviously just for programming these devices, but the same process applies also for the program anything which you want to upload a hex file for. In the bin folder of this one, firmware, we need to choose the correct one. Now we need to go at mega 8. It could be 48 or an 88 as well, but at mega 8 is what's on my device. So this is the one we want to choose. All we've really got to do is drag this into the terminal. Terminal will then tell you the full path which we use in that file. So you basically grab that, copy it, get in here and hit paste. There we go, we've now replaced that file with that other. Okay, so on which the Arduino IDE used and generated the output, we've now replaced with that path. That is actually ready to program. Basically, I'll show you, I'll, I'll do it. It won't work because I don't have the other program plugged in. I'm not going to program it a second time, but I can demonstrate it. So we'll delete that bit. When I hit paste, this will probably immediately trigger AVR dude. So when I paste this, it'll probably start to go. There we go. So that tried to work then. You got the command, which is all this stuff we, we programmed, and it tried to work. So it got the configuration file, did all that stuff, found the necessary information, recognized the processor, and you look up, it found that at Mega 8. It confirms when that part's working. Now, this is one of the things we have issues with. The errors we'll get on the Arduino IDE if you don't update the firmware relates to this set SCK period. That's the error we'd get. In this case, we didn't get it because I've already updated these. It isn't going to give an error. Target doesn't answer because we don't have anything plugged in. So let's try to program. There was no device plugged in, didn't find anything. So immediately it stopped. That's it, it's done. But if I did have a ball plugged in, it would have tried to program it. Now I'm going to go to another window, which I've got here, which is where I actually did this. Let me get the right part. So this is the very first time I did it. I was trying to program, before I did the update on these, I was trying to program the Retro Trip to the Pro. Before I tried to update the firmware on the programmers, it failed, which is why I'm saying you need to do this first. Because it went through, wrote the device, did verification, and verification failed. Verification gave an error. It didn't actually match. Didn't program correctly. Then I did it again. This time I was programming the actual programmer, which is what I've just showed you. And that's it doing it there. Programmed the second one. That's it. That was the program is updated then. Okay. Verifying it. Done. There we go. That's the second one programmed. Now that already covers how to program a hex file into a, a device. I've shown you it. That was it. Obviously we did it as part of programming the programmers. But that's basically it. Use terminal, get the path, edit the file as required, and do it all in terminal. And that's the key to it is knowing how to get the paths and how to generate that line which you need to edit. So generate that line in between the IDE, figure out the paths of the hex files, make sure you've got the right programmer set and the right device set, and off you go. Once you've done the update on the programmers, just that little bit is all you've got to do. You don't have to do it again. That's it. You've got it. Paste it in terminal and off you go. So it actually makes it really easy once you know how to do it. That's the key. You have to know how to do it first. You found it useful? Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Maybe click the thanks thing down there. Give a donation to the channel. Or if you want to become a Patreon supporter and donate to the channel, it's up there somewhere. Patreon support link will appear up there. You can become a member of the channel as well on YouTube if you prefer. Patreon's better, to be honest. Here's a Patreon link. If you want to support me, it's like a couple of dollars a month and it helps the channel a bit and uh, up to you.